the city of Denver put the Colorado Convention Center expansion project on hold, and this was because a Public Works employee discovered some funny business going on with the bidding process. Our Marshall Zollinger has been going through a whole bunch of emails that are helping explain why the city believes the project was tainted with insider information. This is what the Colorado Convention Center is supposed to look like after an expansion to the rooftop and a new ballroom. The city of Denver has temporarily put this on hold. Bear with us as we walk you through some of the emails detailing why. We had a company that uh, not only received the answers to the test, but they actually wrote the answers to the test. And so thereby uh, creating a competitive advantage over the other bidders. Denver Public Works Director Ulysses Cleckley is talking about Trammell Crow Company and Mortensen. Trammell Crow is the company the city hired to manage the convention center expansion project. Mortensen is one of the companies that was preparing a bid to be picked to do the construction. In July, Trammell Crow emailed Mortensen, FYI, as always, keep this quiet. The this was bullet points being drafted to determine what the city was looking for in a winning bid. The bullets were written by the city of Denver and sent to two Trammell Crow employees. Keep this between the three of us for now, the city wrote. That email was forwarded to Mortensen. In another July email, the city sent Trammell Crow a proposed contract for the Colorado Convention Center. Trammell Crow forwarded that draft to Mortensen. And two days later, when there was a new draft contract, Trammell Crow also emailed that to Mortensen. A Trammell Crow spokeswoman tells Nine News that the company fired Mike Sullivan, the senior vice president emailing that information to Mortensen. Marshall Zellinger, Nine News. So that was just a sample of what the city believes it found in the emails that are showing collusion. Coming up in about 12 minutes, Marshall is going to be joining us for a much longer discussion about what was going on and what could happen next. Well, now we want to take a little bit more of an in-depth look into the convention center expansion delay. The city of Denver has stopped its process to pick a construction company to the work because the mayor believes there might have been collusion with one of the construction companies bidding for that work. So our Marshall Zollinger has been reading through hundreds of pages of emails and is here live to talk us through what the city found and why does this matter is now with the Denver District Attorney's Office. Well, earlier in the newscast, we gave you a brief overview of some of the emails and I want to show you a few others that need a bit more detailed explanation. First, a quick recap of the players involved. Trammell Crow Company is the group the city hired to manage the expansion project at the convention center. Mike Sullivan was the senior vice president representing Trammell Crow in the emails you're about to see. Mortensen is one of the companies that bid on the project to become the contractor. Follow me so far. This first email is from June. I'm sorry, it's blurry. It's the way I got it from the city. Mortensen wrote Sullivan at Trammell Crow. Were you able to get any language into the qualifications stating that the city doesn't want any teams to be created to maximize women and minority owned businesses opportunities with the prime contractor? This is another element that would shut down Turner and their plans with Gilmore. There's a lot of verbatim in there, but at this point, Mortensen isn't supposed to know about the qualifications it's talking about that the city is going to be requesting. And here's what the city believes is going on in this email. The city believes Mortensen was asking Sullivan at Trammell Crow to make sure Contractors wouldn't be allowed to team up to meet certain requirements that the city would require for minority and women owned businesses, which apparently, based on this blurry email, might have had implications on a bid between Turner and Gilmore construction companies. That's a lot to dive What uh, we uh, identified is that there was direct uh, communications to one bidder uh, to try to craft language that would eliminate uh, 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 future bidders that had included a minority and woman owned business uh, to be eligible or to be um, in a position to uh, bid on that project. A lot of times these things are found out after the fact, in this case beforehand. So how did the city find out that something funny was going on in the first place? So I don't have an exact answer to that just yet, but according to Public Works, a Public Works employee saw something didn't look right in an email and brought it to their supervisor's attention. Uh, another example, once a few companies make the final cut, they're interviewed and given what's called a live scenario question. Basically, you're in the middle of a project and this specific unexpected event occurs. What do you do? The city showed me emails that they believe show Mortensen and Trammell Crow working together to come up with those questions that Mortensen would be asked if they made the final cut. And when one of the questions was changed in November, there's an email showing Trammell Crow sending it to Mortensen. 
Now there's another set of emails I want to show you that uh, I'm going to call it food flirting. It's an email exchange that the city believes shows Trammell Crow and Mortensen working together to set pricing data that the city was going to use to figure out if a company's bid was within the right dollar amount for a project like this. In May, Sullivan at Trammell Crow wrote to Mortensen, quote, I'm serious about wanting to take you and Sean out for a nice dinner where we can eat and drink our faces off. I would like to do that to say thanks. The next week after Mortensen sent some design attachment to Sullivan, Sullivan wrote again, before I even, up the, even open the attachments, when will you boys allow me to take you out for nice food and wine? Mortensen wrote back, I can think of a day that would be awesome, smiley face, the day we get this job. And then Sullivan wrote, nope, that's the day you guys can take me out. All right, if there's ever food flirting or in an email, I think that <laughs> yes. might have been it. Okay, we know how hard it is to get our hands on emails like this. How did the city get their hands on them in the first place? Well, so uh, the city tells me that these emails are city property because when it hired Trammell Crow, any work product related to this, emails, documents, anything like that, it's essentially the city's property. Well, Trammell Crow has hired a Denver law firm, Hogan Lovells, and a well-known attorney, Cole Finnegan, who tells me his law firm is doing its own internal investigation went through these emails themselves and actually sent them to the city, and that's why the city has then given them to me. Well, this morning, Trammell Crow sent me a two-paragraph statement. You can read it all online, but the second half reads this way. The emails of our former employee, Mike Sullivan's interactions with Mortensen, reflect statements and actions that were not authorized by Trammell Crow Company in any way. Mr. Sullivan's communications were improper, contrary to our values and longstanding business practices, and the reason we terminated his employment. Meanwhile, Mortensen has hired a local public relations firm, which provided me this statement. Mor Mortensen is in contact and fully cooperating with the district attorney regarding this matter. We have given them our assurance that we will not be providing further statements while they are conducting this investigation. There, there's a lot to cover here, but I imagine this also might give one the indication that this stuff goes on all the time. So now, It did not seem like this was some, somebody new to the party. Both of these companies have done business with the city of Denver before. So now it's, I'm sure it's part of the Denver DA's investigation. I'm sure the city is curious. Do any of these emails or type of communications exist in those other projects? And who knows, besides these companies, is this the way business is done sometimes where someone's getting a leg up? Uh, this is stuff that we get tips all the time and try to investigate, but it's rare that we get the proof, those emails. So it's a good thing that the city has that contract that allows them access. To those. I mean, any word on what's happening with the actual project now? I'm mean, that it's on hold. Right, so it's on hold. So that the city wants to reset. Uh, they're going to have to hire a new company, perhaps. To so they paid nine million dollars to Trammell wow. Crow to basically do the job of a new city employee to say, hey, we got this big project. You got to figure out the rules for us and find the people that could do the work for us. They have to find a new contractor to do that. Right open up the bid process all over again and find new finalists. I don't know, like, so I was told they don't know because they didn't have a contractor yet, they didn't have a construction schedule, sure. so we didn't have this construction expansion would be done by 2020. We didn't have a date like that, sure. so we don't have an estimate Back yet. to square one. There's a lot to it. Uh, we appreciate you helping us make some sense out of sure. it. Sure. Thanks, I Marshall. Hope I